Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the official top 10 reasons for failing the driving test. I'm going to be driving a little bit and demonstrating some of these things myself and I'll also be showing you lots of sample video clips that I've collected over the years of other people getting these things wrong. So let's get started then with the official top 10 reasons for failing your driving test. So coming in at number 10 is response to signals, road markings. Now the most common example of this is when people simply don't stop on stop signs. So let's turn the car on and I'll show you what I mean. Now you might think it sounds really obvious, you think well I've got to stop dead. But you'll be amazed how many people simply don't stop dead. If I demonstrate it to you now, if I do this, so roll forwards, imagine there's a stop sign where that drain cover is on the floor. If I'm braking like this, this isn't stopping. I'm almost stopping, but I'm not. You must be stop, dead, no movement at all. Now, do you have to put a handbrake on? Because a lot of people say you've got to put a handbrake on. Some people say you don't. Well, if the answer is the real answer. You don't have to put a handbrake on. As long as you've stopped, you've stopped. So if I do this, if I roll forwards, stop dead, then go, I've stopped. But you must stop dead on stop signs. You'll be amazed how many people don't do it. Time after time this happens, and the stop signs are quite easy to see. They're massive red signs, big red octagons, sometimes on yellow backgrounds, and people just don't see them. So we head back over now, we might be a bit early on this one, but if not we might try to do some maneuvering or something, but uh, that's all I want to do today, is stopping independent which we do a lot more of. Was I instructed didn't even stop in a stop sign? Yeah. They get really there. worried when That's they get that close. Sorry. Now that instructor didn't even stop, he's supposed to stop dead there and I'll just carry on. Coming in at number 9 is reverse park control. Now loads of people have problems reverse parking so let me show you one and show you how simple it is to do. Now, bear in mind I have been doing this for years and I've practiced it many, many hundreds of times. But all you simply do is pull up by the car, take good observation, which I'll mention in a moment, reverse, and using the method that I use, it's simple. You reverse like this, looking all around, checking for anything around, nothing around, turn it now. And there you go, it's easy, you power up parked. But loads of people get it wrong because when they do it, the control goes wrong. If I move down the road now, I'll show you what I mean. So a lot of people park, actually I'll turn around here. A lot of people when they park or when they maneuver in general, they simply lose control of the car and they end up all kinds of weird angles. So if people come back like this, but they end up with the car facing that way like that. So they're all over the road, so the front is totally out, it's facing the wrong way. Sometimes when people park, they get too wide from the curb, but they end up like here, and they're nowhere near the curb at all. It's miles away. Normally it wouldn't matter if you're just going to pull it for a few seconds or now, but you must park closer than that. So if I pull up here, do like a mini bit of parking. If I go about now, you must park so your wheels are relatively close to the curb. You notice I'm using the left mirror. That's really one of the keys to doing this manoeuvre well. You can put the mirror down and use it. Loads of instructors I've come across say, oh, you can't, you know, they don't like you using the mirror. That's completely incorrect. The reason that mirror goes down is so you can park. Um, there are many cars now, especially German cars, when you go into reverse gear, the mirrors automatically fold down so you can see where you're going into a bay. So it's not cheating to put the mirror down. So if you're having problems parking, that's one tip for you. Try putting the mirror down, makes it much, much easier. But that's the official um, eighth, ninth, sorry, ninth reason that people fail the driving test. Coming in at number eight is moving off safely. Now this is a really simple one to get but so many people get it wrong. Moving off safely means that you move off at a time when it will be safe to move off. So for example what people often do wrong is this, come back shooting on around. A lot of people when they're on the test they panic and the examiner says to them okay move off when it's safe to do so. And people signal straight away. Now you tell us that van behind me. There's a van coming up to sort out the signal off. If I was still signalling now, confusing that van, that van could break and think, are you going or not? And I've made them stop. Then I move off, but I won't move off because I haven't put it in gear yet and I've all back. Then I have to brake, then the van goes, then I put it into gear and go, and it becomes a right mess. So moving off safely is quite an easy thing to do, but it's the eighth biggest thing that people fail on. 
So what you must do is a thing called posh. So you prepare, observe, signal if necessary, handbrake. So posh fund stands for prepare, observe, signal, handbrake. And if you remember that, you won't have the problems you'll see in this video clip. Coming in at number seven, we have position normal driving. This simply means the position on the road that you're driving when you're driving down a normal road. So if I show you an example now of how not to do it, a lot of people do this when they're on the test to go too wide and they're driving down the middle of the road and then they drive over here and they're coming up close to the curb. And you, they don't do that badly, they're not all over the road, all over the place, but people just get the wrong position. I know those runs on the left to block in my view. So I've got a creep, 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 creep. There is a van there but I can go because you're going very slow and it's flashing me to go anyway. So I'll creep through. That's a good example of positioning. I'm glad that van appeared. In fact it's pulling up. So I'll pull up on the left just round the, just down the road. But for example now my positioning is good. I'm going round the right bend so I can actually move left quite a bit, get a better view. And I'll pull up just round here. It's very quiet round here so this will be okay. So yeah, that's quite a simple one, just general positioning, you're in the wrong position on the road. If you go around the right bend, you should be moving left a little bit. And if you go around the left bend, you should be moving right a little bit. Again, this is a compilation of, um, of errors that people make. I'm not necessarily showing you exactly how to get rid of them. This is just because people often ask me, what's the top 10 things that people do wrong? This feels horrible, it wrecks your engine. But even just once is enough to, to do a lot of damage. Coming in at number six, we have moving off control. This means that people don't actually move off under control. So it might be that they're looking around well enough and they're checking what's going on all around them, but they're not actually moving off in a safe way. The most common fault on this is people often move off in third, and I never know why people do this. I've taught many people to drive from the beginning. They've never had a problem at all moving off. And on the driving test, I can guarantee you, probably half of all pupils put into third gear instead of one. Why? Well, I suppose you must be nervous, but when you ask them, why did you do that? They all say, I don't know. <laughs> Loads of people put into third gear and try and move off. If you try it, you'll just stall as you go. Another one is people forget to put into gear at all. They leave in neutral, and when they get moving down the road, they're revving and revving, nothing's happening because you're not in gear. Another one is when people roll backwards on a hill, and then they start flying forwards. So moving off under control is something you should have mastered by the time you go for a driving test. But People often get nervous on the tests and these things can happen. Um, you just wait if you haven't taken a driving test yet. Wait until you do and you'll find that a lot of things, a lot of times your mind just goes blank and things just go out of your mind completely. Coming in at number five, we have response to signals, traffic lights. So let me get driving down the road and we'll have a quick look at what can happen to traffic lights. One of the things that examiners want to see on traffic lights, because this is how you should be driving, um, is you must be prepared to stop regardless of what's happening. So I'm going to turn left at the end of the road here and I'm going to show you an example of how pupils can get it wrong. Now I'm hoping that just the right situation is going to happen here. Let's just see. Um, so I don't know obviously if the lights are going to change or not, but there are some lights further on up this road. So if I keep driving up the road just for a little bit, what you must do is you must be prepared to slow down and stop. It's no good coming towards a set of lights with your foot down on the accelerator in fact, I won't, I'll probably show you, but the bus is in the way, it's slowing everyone down. You can't come towards the set of lights with the accelerator down, just hoping they don't change. You do see many drivers on the road, you seem to drive with their fingers crossed like this. I hope they don't change, I hope they don't change. Or oh, they've changed, slam the brake on, skid to a halt, or go blasting through a red light. You don't see as well, these go red, that car decided to stop. Yeah. Exactly not to approach the set of lights. Now it's reversing straight to that blue one. So 
I went to see how much to do right back. <coughs> I went to see how much to do on your own. It's, I don't, well, we have, we have been this way before, but I'm going to try and change it a little bit. But there's only so many ways you can go. So, straight on for about a mile. So, car going straight through a red light. See, he hasn't even seen the light. The brake stop, stop, stop. That car's running straight through, he didn't even see. <coughs> you tell he didn't see because he stopped at that one, but he didn't stop on this one. It's no good, you've got to be prepared. So, looking at these lights ahead, I can see there are some people around, although I think they're further on at the bus stop. Now the view is really bad. This isn't really the way I wanted to show you because I wanted to be driving towards them quite quick. Just imagine though, someone was walking up from the side. I'm not going to look in my mirrors and they are changing. I don't even know what's behind me. I'm braking. I've got no idea what's behind me. So people are approaching lights at the wrong time. And that person I couldn't even see, but there is someone there crossing the road. Now they've gone back to flash the amber, I know they're probably very, very, very unlikely to go to green. So I can accelerate through them like this. But if I'm approaching lights and have been on green for a long time, you must be checking your mirrors and be prepared to slow down. Whether or not anyone is there is irrelevant. You can say, well, no one's there. That doesn't mean they're not going to change. Somebody could have pressed the lights and then walked off. Um, we've all done that where you've pressed the lights, all the traffic's cleared, and then suddenly you've walked off and the lights have gone red, you've heard them beeping behind you and have changed to red and all the drivers are cursing you <laughs> for having pressed the button. But yeah, that's the, uh, the reason that people fail on the, on the traffic lights. So you must be prepared to slow down and stop on the approach. It's no good just saying, well, no one's there, I didn't have to. Imagine there were some lights where this lamppost on the right is. If I accelerate like that, they go amber. I could have stopped if I'd approached them better. So you must stop the lights if it's safe to do so. about you know so before you know people jump the lights yeah. still can't go through red because you have you went around that van or lorry or whatever but that's the best thing to do is hold back lane I mean, if you don't you get stuck when you come off you must come off in the second lane from the left because the left one is only for the van but so you see how the markings are showing we come from where the van is that's really good and that van is going to drive itself off yeah Coming in at number four, a junction's turning right. So let me get driving down the road now and I'll show you what this is all about. If you're gonna turn right, one of the most common mistakes people make is I block the other side of the road. So people do mirrors, signal, I won't signal because I'm not gonna turn, but they indicate, then they go like this, and people stop and they say, why is that car ahead slowing down? Why is he flashing at me? Or is he letting me go? and they turn like that. They're only letting you go because you block the entire road by being too far to the right. If I'm going to turn right here, I would do mirror signal if I was going to turn. I'll be keeping way back before this car, stopping slowing down there, then going in, still keeping straight, then turning. Uh, there are many reasons this can be. Um, you can be cutting the corner sometimes, and that's actually got its own box on the marking sheet. But turning right here, for example, Sam again, I wouldn't do mirrors, signal stray i'm on the wrong side of the road people often don't see that they don't understand that they're on the wrong side of the road you can also be when you're coming out of a junction and um, if you don't take enough observation you don't see what's going on then that can be a problem for turning right but it's more often when you turn into junctions that's a problem okay so we're into the top three now number three is control steering there's a great one I can show you in a moment to do with the roundabout. I won't actually do it because I'll be breaking the law if I did. But what people often do is they come up to many roundabouts and just go totally the wrong side of them. That can be a steering fault because you've gone the wrong side of the roundabout. Steering can also be getting too close to the kerb. Now if you look at the car in front of me, they're parked up so that's good to be that close. But some people drive that close on a test at 60 miles an hour. That's just dangerous. Look how far they are from the right from the middle of the road, the marking in the middle. People also just lose control of the steering in general, um, especially down to nerves on a test. People twitch like this. It's not the way you steer, because you can cross your arms like that if you want. Um, that isn't wrong, although it's not advised, it's not wrong. But some people steer in such a clumsy way that they make their own problems. Lots of people, for example, steer like this when they're going to turn right. I mean, look how slow that is. It's taking ages and all the effort and all the noise. If you're going to turn right, 
turn right, you're going to turn left. You turn left, see how quick that was? That's the pull push method, and yes, I know I'm not moving. Normally you'd be moving, but I can't be moving and steering and talking to you all at the same time. So there you go, that's number three, control steering. Coming in at number two is use of mirrors, change in direction. So let's go for another drive and I'll demonstrate this one. So loads of people know stare how much under the mirrors in the blind spot. If you're gonna turn right, you should do a minimum of middle mirror, right mirror, signal. You have to make it, and on this roundabout by the way, I'll even, I'll even be looking left because this is such a bad one for people flying down the hill and they don't even see the roundabout. Now, there's loads of traffic, so I'm gonna stop putting the handbrake on. But remember me saying that because in a moment we'll be coming back to that point. So really, really busy. Not much chance of going here for quite a while. You see the bus has slowed down and stopped, which is pointless because I can't actually go. <laughs> it's good he did that, but there's no way I can go because there's too much coming from the right hand side. So it's good the bus did that and slowed down because a lot of people don't slow down at all there. They just go straight into you. I've seen quite a few accidents on this particular road where people don't give way there at all. But you must do the mirrors before you turn. If I do next road on the right, sorry the weather's so bad, it was bright sun when I started filming it. So I'll do middle mirror, right mirror, right signal. You must make it so you can't even put that signal on until you've done the mirrors. When I drive, if I try and signal without doing the mirrors, I can't. <laughs> My body won't let me do it. If I go down this road, I'll show you. If I was going to turn left here, and I just try and signal, I can't because I haven't done my mirrors. You have to get it programmed in, but you must do the mirrors, then signal if needed, not when you're pulling up, but when you're turning. It must be middle mirror, and then whichever way you're going to go. We always recommend that you check the mirrors in pairs, so the middle one, so you get the best view possible. Because remember, the middle mirror is different to the outside mirrors. The middle one um, has got a flat, proper view of what's going on behind you. The outside ones are convex, they have convex glass, so the view is a bit distorted, especially when it's raining like today. And you don't get such a good picture of what's going on. So number two, use of mirrors, change in direction. That's going to pull out this year. Exactly how you don't pull out this one. So our bus just went, then sit on the Okay, so here we are, number one. What do you think the number one thing is that people do wrong? Yep, it's the old classic, junctions observation. Now, coming out of junctions has been the number one reason that people fail driving tests for over 10 years now. Um, every single year they issue these statistics. Every time you know it's going to be top of the list, junction observation. But the thing is, it isn't actually the observation that's the problem. You get marked down for this because they say you didn't see the car coming. Like people pull out junctions and they say, oh, you didn't see that car coming from the side. Very often, the reason people don't see the car coming is because they're not approaching the junction using the correct method. Now, I've been over this many times before in videos, but when you get to a junction, you shouldn't just stop and then go as it's a stop sign. So, if it's a giveaway line, what you're supposed to do is something like this. So we come into the junction, imagine that lamppost at the end of the road. I do clutch down, brake, brake off, roll, creep, look, go. So many instructors insist on stop, handbrake, gas, clutch, look, 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 crash, because you've done it totally wrong. The number of instructors that teach that is unbelievable. Give way, as I've said many times before, Give way means give way. It doesn't mean stop. If you're stopping all the time, it's no wonder so many people have problems coming out of junctions. Imagine if I can't see here. Imagine there's a big hedge here beside the car. I can't see. I've never been taught to creep forwards because many people don't teach this. I've been taught to stop, go. So I've stopped. I can't see. So I think, okay, well, my instructor told me to go. Smash the examiner's on the brake because you can't see. You've got to be able to creep, creep, creep. Creep, 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 and I'll stop because there's a car coming up behind me. <laughs> but that's what you must be able to do. Now, not all instructors are bad, but the main reason people fail tests is because so many instructors insist on not doing that. In fact, I had a people come to me in last week and they said to me, My last instructor wouldn't let me practice that. Why? Because you just got a brand new car and he didn't want to burn his clutch out. You won't burn your clutch out. This car's brand new. But I've been teaching for 13 years now. I've never had a clutch blow up because of clutch control. I had one that was faulty the day the car came. It was faulty, had to go back straight away. But I've never had a clutch that blew up because of doing clutch control. I can do this 
over and over again. And I had the same learner car once for over two years. I did 56,000 miles. There was nothing wrong with the clutch at all. People have said it damages your clutch. It doesn't. It's just a myth how it damages your clutch. It doesn't. It only damages it if you do it incorrectly. Okay, so there we have it. That's the top 10 official reasons that people fail the driving test. Now, I'd like to add my own number one, which I think the main reason people fail a driving test is most people's go when they're simply not prepared. They're not ready for a driving test. Whether that's down to them trying to save money on lessons or the instructor not teaching properly, that's up for debate. But one of the biggest reasons, I'll say the biggest reason of all, is most people that go on a driving test are not ready for it. The DVSA themselves say, and this is true, if you're ready for a driving test, you won't find it too hard. Now, I'm going to do a video in the future about how the driving test is marked, but a lot of people made the mistake of saying, I only got one fault, I only got two faults, so I nearly passed. I'm going to tell you in a future video why that is not exactly true, and why even if you only get one fault, you probably failed in more ways than you think. Anyway, that's all for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon for more videos.